In this video, we're going to show you how easy it is to visit all 19 of South Africa's national parks, which are also known by the abbreviation SAND parks. Hi, we're Jeff and Patty. We're U.S. van lifers who built our own van about three years ago during COVID, and we've been on the road ever since. We spent last summer in Alaska and last winter in Baja, Mexico. Now, this summer, we're in Africa. So we decided to leave our van back in the United States, fly to South Africa, and rent a van here, and explore the world-renowned Kruger National Park and visit South Africa. Come along. How's that right-hand drive, Jeff? Took a day to get used to, but then easy peasy. We spent 21 days in the Kruger National Park, also known by the locals as the Kruger. And afterwards, we had no idea what the rest of our trip would look like. We had two more months to go until we found this map of all the South African national parks. So we sort of looked at that map, connected the dots and realized, you know, we could probably get all 19 South African national parks on this trip. Well, we're off on a game drive this morning. Before we came here, I honestly thought a game drive was where you go out and shoot animals, but now I know. A game drive is when you go out and drive and look for game and birds. Every rest camp has one of these. It's a sign that tells you when the gates open and close and this tells you when you can do a game drive. You can't drive in the park after dark and you'll be fine if you miss a gate closing. So here we are after three months of exploring Sand Parks National Parks, and we're in Bontebok National Park. And this is our 19th and final park, which is totally sad. We love them. Actually, we think there are 23 national parks in South Africa. Three of them recently combined into one park, but since they're geographically separated, we stayed in all three of them. And there's one additional park that calls itself a national park, not technically part of the national park system, but it shows up on all the national park maps, and we stayed there too. We had a number of diversions along the way. The first month we started our trip with a Toyota 4x4 with a pop-up tent on the top, and then for the last two months we have been in this wonderful VW 4x4 van called a Happy Camper. We generally stayed one to two nights at each rest camp. That's what they call a campground in South Africa National Park. For example, Kruger National Park has 21 rest camps. Again, it's the size of Massachusetts. We stayed in 11 of those. Here at Bontebok National Park, there's only one rest camp. It's the smallest national park in the system. The rest camps, like the one we just stayed at in the valley down here, usually offer camping options and lodging options. They may also include a park store, a restaurant, and other services. Since we had a camping rig, we tried to book campsites in all the parks. However, they were often full and some of the rest camps didn't offer campsites. In which case we booked what they call huts, chalets, rendezvous, or safari tents. I'm just gonna lump all these together and call them chalets. But they are all fully equipped accommodations. You just show up. The cost of a campsite in most of the national parks was about 200 to 300 rand, which is about 10 to 15 bucks US per night where a chalet or a safari tent ranged in price from $40 to $100 a night US. We always book just one to five days in advance, and we usually book the cheapest available accommodation. Although the lodges were certainly more expensive than camping, frankly, they were often cheaper than many campsites we find in the United States. We stayed at some pretty luxurious places for under 100 bucks a night. We thought about ranking the parks, but it's just impossible to do so because each one offers a different and unique experience. Whether it be different animals, different birds, the geography, it's just phenomenal. Needless to say, the South African National Park System is a world-class park system. And anybody can do this. And really, you don't even need a van. You can just rent a car and book the chalets as you go. And we'll show you how to do that. So let us know in the comments if you'd like us to tell you more about any of these natural parks. We, we also spent time in Zimbabwe, Zambia, 
Botswana, and Namibia, but we'll tell you about them in a future video. To give you some perspective about the size of South Africa, it's about the size of France, or about one-eighth of the U.S. However, it still takes about 20 hours to drive across the country. The roads range from decent interstate type roads, although not too many of them, to many, many, many miles and kilometers of corrugated dirt roads. To be honest with you, we didn't realize that we could bag all 23 of the national parks uh, until after we arrived in South Africa. And uh, if we were smart enough to find this map uh, before we left, we would have been much more efficient in how we hit all these parks. So here's how we went. And, uh, and here's a much more efficient route, which we'd recommend to you guys, which starts and finishes in Cape Town and hits all 19 of the national parks. We chose to come here in June through August, which is their winter. And other than a few chilly nights huddled in the van, it was perfect. And it was also perfect because the volume of people visiting the parks is low. It's in between everybody's high season, so we highly recommend it. When I went online, to book our campsites just three weeks before we left, uh, I noticed that July and August in Kruger were almost completely booked. Uh, since we were arriving in South Africa on June 2nd, we decided to front load our trip with a get to Kruger as soon as we could because there was still a lot of availability in the park. Kruger campsite availability kind of drove our entire itinerary. As Jeff said, July and August is a high season when Americans and Europeans come to the Kruger. Bookings open 11 months in advance. Also, they have another high season in December, January, and that's what South Africans call their school holidays. So that's when the locals fill the park. Also, it's much hotter then. If you can avoid those high seasons, it's relatively easy to book a Kruger. Like I said, in three weeks advance notice, we booked three weeks in Kruger. Didn't get all the sites we wanted exactly, but enough to have it a fantastic trip. Kruger is about the size of Massachusetts and has 21 rest camps. We managed to stay at about 11 of them. And I have to say, all of them were fantastic. Another underrated, uh, less talked about aspect of Kruger are these things called picnic grounds. And we, every one we hit was well worth a stop. Each one is very different, but some of them make on the spot rooster cook bread. After Kruger, the other 18 parks in the system are very easy to get reservations in, especially during those off seasons. For example, name one other park in South Africa other than Kruger. I hear birds chirping literally and figuratively. Didn't come up with any, did you? No, that's because Europeans and Americans don't go to the other 18 parks, just the locals do. So for those other 18 parks, we usually booked as we went, kind of one to five days in advance. And that worked without a problem. One downside is that the Sand Parks website won't let you book same day. So you have to think at least one day in advance or take a risk drive up to the park and just sign up the same day. We have no idea what these parks uh, entail. Sometimes you get into a park and it's phenomenal and you want to spend a couple days there. Sometimes it's like, ah, one day is enough and you keep moving. Uh, so that's why we seldom book more than one to five days in advance. The bottom line is anybody can do this at a very reasonable price, especially compared to the big safari lodges that people tell you you should go to. You can easily rent a van, a camper van, happy camper van is a good one, but if not, you can rent a regular car and just do the lodge circuit. It's a phenomenal way to see Africa. Another expense is the daily conservation fee you have to pay when visiting the national parks. The conservation fee varies from park to park from a high of about 23 bucks per person per day in Kruger and lower costs in the other parks. We spend 70 days in the parks. Instead of paying for each day, you can buy an annual wild card. The wild card for an international couple was about $275 US. If we had paid the daily fees, it would have cost us over $2,000. So if you are planning on spending more than six days in the park, you should definitely get a wild card. You can pick the wild card up at the first campground you go to. So you don't have three months to spend in South Africa? 
we're working on a video that shows you how to spend one or two weeks in South Africa, see thousands of animals, and have the time of your life. Well, I wanted to thank you for uh, having a magnificent park system. We visited all 19 of your parks. It's just world class and we will be back. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We really appreciate your presence in our park and your visit. I hope that we are exploring a lot of things in our park. We are. That we did enjoy. Have a blessed day. Thank, thank you so you much. <laughs> thank you so much. Not that I'm reading my script or anything, but I'm totally reading my script. We also spent time in Zimbabwe, Zamibia, Botswana, and Namibia. But we'll tell you about those in a future video. <laughs> it's Zimbabwe. <laughs> Let's save that for.